Welcome to the Ring of Faith, where we coach you through God's Word on how to become a knockout artist in life. That's right. And today we're talking about living to give. That's good. I love the scripture. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 26 says, this is in the New Living Translation, some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. That's right. I love giving. Right. And the Bible says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yeah, I mean, it's godly to give, right? It's, it's an attribute of God to imitate him because he's a giver. Therefore, we as believers and followers of Christ should also be givers. I do love that scripture. And here at the Ring of Faith, actually, we love to give, and we are big givers in this ministry. And every single month we tithe, you know, we give back to a local church that feeds us because, you know, we're getting fed as well, and then we're able to pour out into you some of the things that we learn. And then we also give to ministries that are helping people Mm -hmm. all across uh, this area, but all across the country as well. All across the world. And across the world at times. We've been led by the Spirit, you know, to give to some ministries that have blessed uh, people all around the world. And we also, every month, look for opportunities to bless people in this community. And that's important to us because, Mm -hmm. you know, we know that we are blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we could go and spend every single thing we get on something, you know, and we do have, you know, expenses as a ministry for sure. You know, we have equipment needs and things that help us to reach our goals, but we love to give. We love to take some of the money that comes in, some of the resources that come in and just give back to those in need. That's good. I love the scripture. Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse seven says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. Right. Don't say he loves a fearful giver where I I gotta give, I gotta give, it's God, I gotta give it. Or a tearful giver, like, oh, I gotta give to God. But no, he loves a cheerful, cheerful giver where it's like, man, who can I help? Because when you release that, it releases God. And when you're acting like God, the Bible says in John 3 16, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son because of his love. And so when you have a cheerful heart and you're looking for opportunities to give, man, that makes God smile because you're acting just like him. And it says not of necessity, like where you have to, Mm -hmm. but you get to. That's so good. And then the verse right after that, Anthony, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, says that, you know, when we do this, when we give cheerfully, God is able to make all grace abound toward us, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. And so I wrote this punch point based on those two scriptures. It says, when you give cheerfully, God makes sure you have all you need to do his work. And we've seen that in our lives that, you know, when we have cheerfully given, um, God has really made sure that we have what we needed to fulfill the call of God on our lives. And I know he's going to do the same for you. That's awesome. You know, Galatians chapter six, and verse seven says, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. Right. And that's talking about finances as well. It's talking about your time, whatever it is, you're going to reap what you sow. You know, the, the world calls it karma. But the Bible calls it sowing and reaping. Right. You sow bad seeds, you're going to have bad, bad harvest. But you sow finances and you sow them into good ground where people are touching lives and you're doing what God wants you to do, you're going to get a good harvest from it. The Bible says in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and verse 18, it says, Remember the Lord thy God, for it's he that gives you the power to get well, to establish his covenant. It is God's purpose for prosperity for you so you can establish his covenant, so you can help people. And during this Christmas time, you know, we've had the opportunity already to help a lot of people. But we get an opportunity to even help more people coming up during this Christmas season. A lot of people in life don't have a lot of finances or they don't have a lot of time or they don't have a lot of love. Give what you have. It's not always just about finances. But you can give your time. You can give your love. You can give a smile, encouragement. That all is seeds. That's so good, Anthony. So, you know, speaking of things we've done to give back to the community, recently we had a really cool opportunity to do something at Thanksgiving. And, you know, we just want to say thank you in advance to our partners and the people that pray for this ministry and so into this ministry because this is what we get to do. Mm -hmm. This is the exciting stuff. But we had an opportunity to partner with a ministry called All For Him Ministries, and we were able to feed the homeless at Thanksgiving. Check this video out.
I hope you all enjoyed that video. That really was fun. That was just an awesome thing to be a part of. It really blessed me. But the cool thing is, is it really blessed a lot of the people that came out and helped mm -hmm. with that event. We had, I think if you read on there, 27 partners or people that came from Ring of Faith Ministries to help at that event. And the people that came were just so blessed to be able to give back on Thanksgiving. It was awesome. That's so rewarding. That's right. All right. So I, I wanted to share with you, and Anthony shared a little bit of this, but just to give you something. So if I you're, usually get ahead of Yeah, he schedule. likes to jump ahead, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, it's just that, that Holy Spirit just, <laughs> you know, bringing it to his remembrance to jump ahead, you know. So, uh, or like God who can see the future, right? <laughs> He's imitating God. Exactly. can see the future. Um, but what can I give? If you're taking notes, here's some things you can give. So the first thing you can give is time. This is important. Volunteer at your local church or in your community. This is something Anthony and I both do. We, we still volunteer for years. <laughs> for years at our local church. Now, it's gone through seasons where we can, you know, do a little bit more than others. And there's seasons where maybe you can, you know, volunteer a little more. And sometimes you might just need to volunteer a little. And that's okay. But get involved in your local church. Also in your community. And this is something that we do here as Ring of Faith. Mm -hmm. And we find other ministries that have good organization and are really reaching the lost and we partner with them sometimes like we did with all for him and other times we have our own events mm -hmm. that we put together and i want to encourage you if you want to be a part of those just write to us at mail at ring of tv.com you can email us there or write to us at p.o box 1110 mount juliet tennessee 37121 we'd love to hear from you put us your name and a way we can get a hold of you, either an email or a phone number. And we'd love to tell you about how you can be a part of volunteering for Ring of Faith outreaches. That's great. And another way that we can donate is talent. Right. Like she said, we, we spent years you know, serving at our church and different things. We, we were on the praise and worship team there for 15 years. So we were singing. We were there sometimes three, four days a week. You know, in the church, we used to have to sing every week. We used to get to sing every week. And yeah. we were there, you know, three or four days a week, singing, serving, sharing our talents with them. And, you know, whatever you can do, go share it. I mean, maybe you can go into, like, um, the orphanages, and maybe you can go into some of the, the senior citizen homes and, you know, just share some of your talents. Go Whatever it is, make somebody smile. Make somebody's day better. Look for opportunities to make somebody's day better. That's the way you can share your talents. And we encourage you getting involved to a, in a local church. I always say that at the end of the show because that's what truly changed our lives. The Bible says in Psalm 92, when you're rooted and planted in the house of the Lord, you will flourish. And when you get yourself planted in there, that's where we started to grow and mature, and our ministry came out of that. And we still serve there. We still spend, spend a lot of time there. We're there at church at Wednesdays and on the weekends. But that's where it all started as, as, as us serving. But like she says, now we got other opportunities to serve out as well. And I encourage you, start sharing your time and start sharing your talents. That's right. And of course, don't think that you have to be able to sing or dance mm -hmm. as a talent. It could be baking, mowing. Mm -hmm. I know Anthony mowed for a while for a neighbor who... Um, Three neighbors. <laughs> different. I was just about to say multiple neighbors. There was one who had had like a surgery mm -hmm. and another neighbor who... Um, was going through some challenges in her marriage, and then, you know, another, an older another was an older man, all <laughs> really at the same time. And he just, <laughs> yeah. he wasn't doing those for money. Now, mm. if you need to make money at that, that's fine. But mm. at the time, Anthony's like, I just feel led to mow these people's yard. Mm -hmm. And then years ago, flashback, you know, when Anthony was in prison and mm. I um, was pregnant, and I was out there mowing one time, and a neighbor <laughs> saw me out there pregnant mowing, and took over and said, from here on, you know, to your husband's home, you're not going to mow, mm. and just wouldn't let me mow anymore. Mm. And so I was thankful for that season of not having so to mow. So I was paying back. I was paying <laughs> was back, paying for, back for the time that uh, someone helped me mow. So, yeah, I mean, whatever that talent is, baking, mm. cutting wood. I mean, I know somebody who's really good at two things that I know of. They're really good at encouragement, and they're really good at organization. So you know what this lady's done? She's built a business around encouraging others to get organized. <laughs> and I love that. And, you know, she's totally taken her gifts and made a whole business out of it. And mm -hmm. I want to encourage you, though, you can use your talent. You can find everybody's good at something. Mm -hmm. Everybody exactly. has to have something that God has gifted them with that they can use to bless others and honor God with. And the next thing you can do is your treasure. That's what we were talking about earlier is, is your finances. And I, I always say and I encourage you to tithe. Tithe, Abraham did it before the law. And then Malachi, it talks about during the law, and Jesus was fulfilling the law. And then in Hebrews, it talks about after the law. 
Tithe has always been a part of the Bible, and tithe is a 10%. And that's what truly started changing our lives. I started watching TBN years ago when I really met God, and I, I started listening to Joel Osteen, and then I started giving to TBN. This is before I had a church. And I just, I just knew that I was supposed to give because I needed God involved in my life. I mean, and you don't have to tithe. You get to tithe. But it is so important if you do, if you want God, God involved in your life, it's a, it's, a, it's a have to. If you want God involved in your life, it's to start tithing, and that's a tenth. And then to give above and beyond that, like I said before, you know, Second Corinthians, where he loves a cheerful giver. It's you get to give. Now, because God has opened up so many doors for me and my job and everything, I start flourishing, and, and it's not going to happen overnight. When we first started giving, it's like, man, it just it seems so tight for a while. But then all of a sudden, you just start seeing breakthroughs and breakthroughs and breakthroughs. And we've been a tithing at our church. And even when I went to prison, I was making 10 cents an hour picking up cigarette butts when I first got there. And I would tithe off my 10 cents an hour. I think I'd get like, I'd get I'd whatever, a dollar a week or something. But I would send that in as my tithe. And I was tithing from when I got to prison and, to, and, and I'm still tithing to this day. And God has increased us over time. Mm -hmm. And we're debt free except for our house. And our house is worth a lot more than we owe on our house. And it all started with us starting to give. Because he starts, what it is, it releases God's power in your life. And then he starts, and then you have God's wisdom. Oh, maybe I shouldn't buy that. Maybe I should. And then you start hearing God's voice. And the Bible talks about Malachi 3, how he opens the windows of heaven. Well, the windows of heaven are on the inside of you. You start having creative ideals, and you know what to do with your finances. And, and then all, you have favor, and it's just different things like that. And it's not a have to. And I encourage you, tithe to your local church. I wouldn't even say give your tithe to us. If you don't have a local church, you can send a tithe to a, a TV minister but I encourage you to give your tithe to your local church and then your offerings go to other ministries like we do. We tithe all the money that comes into us, we tithe it to our local church. And then we give above and beyond that to other ministries or to help other things. But your tithe goes to your local church. Mm -hmm. That's so good, Anthony. All right, well, that's the end of round one. Stick around, we're going to be right back with more Ring of Faith. Ring of Faith wants to help others win the battles in their life with the Word of God. Whether it's teaching God's Word, sharing compelling testimonies, or giving back to the community, Ring of Faith is a ministry that cares. If you would like to be a part of all that we are doing here at the Ring of Faith, go to ringoffaithtv.com and click on the Donate tab to find out how you can become a sparring partner. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking about living to giving. That's so good. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 9 that he who has a generous eye will be blessed, prospered by God, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Right. So when you have a generous eye, that means you're looking for opportunities to help somebody. That's right. And it says you will be blessed, prospered by God, empowered to succeed when you have a generous eye. Because if God can get it through you, then he will get it to you. And God is the biggest giver of all. Like I said before, in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So when we give back to him, we're just acting like our father. You know, he gives all things freely, it says in Romans 8, 32. It says that he did not spare his own son, like I just said in John 3, 16, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? God is such a free giver. And when we're not acting like God and we're not giving and we're just stingy and, and, and greedy and hoarding and holding it to ourselves, then it just stop, stops God from working in our lives. Not that God did it. We did it. We stop God from flowing and working in our lives because we don't act like him. That's true, Anthony. And so, you know, we endeavor to share principles from God's word that we have learned ourselves and put into practice and ourselves lived. <laughs> and, and lived, lived and walked out not perfectly mm -hmm. nobody does but these are things we really have done and applied and of course years ago Anthony and I felt called by God to start Ring of Faith Ministries and you know at first 
we had to put in a lot of things ourselves, put a lot of money and resources into the ministry ourselves. Now there was, you know, a good donation that came in at the beginning that helped out a lot, but then eventually, you know, we had to build up partners. And so that took some time and, and and I get that. And I totally recommend that because, you know, when you're watching a ministry, you want to see long-term who they are. Mm -hmm. Do they have integrity? Are they spending money wisely? Are they reaching the community? Are they reaching the lost? And so I get that, but it took a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we, there are times when we would just have to write checks ourselves because we believed in what God had called us to do. And (laughs) we don't want, yeah, we did, you know, and I'm not saying go do that, but I'm just saying we were following the Lord on that. And I don't want anybody out there to feel like they're making any kind of sacrifice when we wouldn't make that sacrifice Mm -hmm. ourselves. And we did that. We made a lot of sacrifices to follow God. We dropped a lot of things, like you said, cash in a 401k at one point and did all kinds of different things financially to make this ministry work. And of course, God has blessed us now so that we don't have to do that, Mm -hmm. you know, as much. We actually give to our ministry because we want to, Mm -hmm. uh, but not because we just have to do it or whatever. And so we're so thankful for that. But I just want to encourage you, you know, we've done this. Mm. We've given, we've sown, and we've made sacrifices, and that's sometimes what it takes. I think financially we gave over $30,000 at the beginning, right, to start this. And then yeah. she she gave up her job working a, a corporate job at a yeah, hotel. Yeah, to help do this, yeah. So that's probably like about $60,000 a year. Or even We'd probably be more now yeah. than when we started. So we, we've done what we're talking about. Yeah. So we've yeah. lived this out. And at first, it's real tight. I mean, I, my job is doing good now, and it, it's in, God's increasing me more and more. Like I just said before, he starts opening up doors and just, I mean, the way we made it, we're doing good as far as in the financial realm, and it, on paper, it wouldn't seem like we would. Right, and, that, and a lot of times, you know, when you first get going on something God calls you to do, mm-hmm. it, you can't always see the big picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, rarely do you see the whole big picture, and it doesn't always make sense on paper. Mm-hmm. And that's why it says, yeah, yeah. you know, that God loves a cheerful giver, and then I'll give you everything mm-hmm. you need to make all, you know, grace abound to you so you can have everything you need for mm-hmm. good works. And so, you know, we cheerfully gave first, <laughs> and then everything started to abundantly come, abundantly come in for what we needed to fulfill this call. And I remember, too, because it's like I've been listening to faith for so many years and confessing the scriptures and believing the scriptures and I what I teach, and I've been doing it for so many years. And, yeah. and when we got that big offering came in right after we started the ministry, somebody saw us on TV and gave us a big offering. And, I mean, I just thought, man, the windows of heaven are open, the floodgates, God's going to just supply, we're going to have everything we need, we're going to be able to do this and do that, and you know, and just going. but it went for a long time, and then we, like she said, we we had to start giving out I of our own I think it was finance. just enough to keep us hanging on, m- hanging on, and because if we hadn't gotten that, you we know, probably would, stopped, we probably, probably would have thought, maybe we missed God, Yeah. but because that came in, we're like, let's go, you yeah, know, but and then, we knew it was God, but then it just like for so long, it's just like, and then we got a, a good partners came in, then we've had some real good big partners come in and help us and we've had so many just faithful faithful partners, partners just faithful monthly. Just monthly and i mean it's just and thank you all so much for that you know and we we like we said before you know god makes all grace abound so you have all sufficiency and and you're doing what god's leading you to do and when you give you know luke 6 38 shall be given back good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men give unto you what you sow you will reap these are all promises that god has given us that you can stand on when you're given into a ministry and, and, and we're, we're, we have integrity on this ministry. Like she said, we're not perfect, but we integrity, discipline, daily, daily, daily. We don't just take money and waste it. We, we're wise with the money. We do, we do good things. We help people, and, and we thank you all for that. And we honor God and praise God for his faithfulness. Absolutely. So, you know, our ministry, just to kind of give you a a nutshell of what we focus on here at Ring of Faith. You know, our focus is our goal, and that's our kind of our theme, is helping others win the battles in life with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard heard us say that, and that's what Ring of Faith is all about. So anything that comes in, first and foremost, that's our number one goal. So if it's anything to help us accomplish that goal, Mm -hmm. if it's a way to get you know, resources to somebody, if it's a way for us to increase, you know, our equipment so that we can better reach you, better teach you, go further, you know, look better, all those things, we focus on that first. But then we also um, give out into the community, and we talked about that a lot, but, you know, that's really important to us as well because, like I said before, we're blessed to be a blessing, and that just makes it fun, too, because the people that help on our team, they love doing the outreaches, and, and they do the filmings, too, but then they love and 
to come and help with those outreaches too. So. And the Bible tells us to go into the world and make disciples. And when we're teaching the Word of God, that's making disciples. Because the Bible says in John 8, 31 and 32, if you continue in my Word, then are you my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So when we're teaching this Word, and we're teaching you what to do through the Word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. that's making disciples. And in James 1.22, when you're here and a doer of that word, that's when you're going to see results in your life. So that's our number one goal, like she said before, help people win the battles in life. And you do that by teaching them the word of God. And when they start acting on that word, it becomes real in their lives. And that's when lives are changed. And that's when, you know, the Bible says in uh, that Jesus is, he's not coming back until the gospel is preached until the whole world. He didn't say until the whole world's fed. He didn't say until the whole world's clothed. He said until the gospel is preached. And when you preach that gospel, the whole world will be fed and the whole world will be clothed because the gospel produces fruit and fruit that remains. So our number one job here is to teach the word of God, to help people win the battles in life. That's right. And of course, you know, our videos, especially a lot of those shorts you've been doing, Anthony, mm-hmm. have reached over 100,000 people mm-hmm. in and we're just so thankful for that because that's just such an easy way, yeah. you know, it's such a great opportunity, you know, to use social media just because some people aren't on television as much anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we have television, of course, and then we have the social media and, you know, and then the outreaches. And we're just really trying to get out into the community. Um, Anthony spoke for a football team recently and shared his testimony. And we both went and shared at a church recently. And they recently. just went undefeated. They did. They won Yay. the state championship. Yeah, they did. Um, so, and he spoke to them, what, just a month or so before. Yeah the state championship so I'm that's taking, pretty I'm cool taking all the credit He's taking all the credit <laughs> and then we both you know spoke at a church recently and mm-hmm. shared our testimony so we're using every avenue that god puts in front of us mm-hmm. to reach others for jesus and that's so important but mm-hmm. we want to tell you now how you can if you do feel led um this is no pressure but if you feel led to give this ministry um you can email us um and for information but you can also go to our website ringofatv.com is our re- is our website there's a section on there that says donate, and you can click on that and find information you need on how to become either a partner where you give every month, or you can just do a one-time donation. You know, the Lord will, you know, bless and multiply whatever you decide to do. Um, and then you could also mail us uh, old school, like a check or whatever, <laughs> to P.O. Box 1110, and that's in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, 37121. And we'll be checking that, and we'll be able to put that in, and of course, you know, when you're writing us uh, a check or whatever, um, hopefully your address would probably be on the check, but we'll send you something at the end of the year and make sure you can uh, deduct those uh, donations if you need to. Some people don't need to, but other people really, really um, want to use those deductions, so we don't blame you for that at all. So just make sure your information is included with any donation. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we want to give you an opportunity to pray that important prayer right now. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, that we are saved by grace through faith, and not, not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's not about how good you are, it's about how great Jesus is. John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus speaking, he says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the way because he's the only one that made a way for everyone. He's not trying to keep anybody out. He died so that everybody could come in. There's not many ways to God. There's one way, and it is the name of Jesus. And I encourage you to, if, you, if you're feeling convicted in your heart, and if you died tonight, you do not know where you would go, heaven or hell, you don't know. Or maybe you want to recommit your life to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Today is the day of salvation. This is your day. It's no accident that you're watching me right now. Jesus is calling. He came for you. He loves you so much. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to say it with your mouth, to mean it from your heart. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me new. Make me new. 
Now the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 that no man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. If you've said that and you mean it from your heart, that is what repentance is all about. You changed your mind. You turned from your way of doing things and you turned it to God and you received Him. If you mean that, and you confessed Him as your Lord and Savior, you just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Click on that Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And that's how you become a knockout artist in life.